Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. What is this video about? Well, you may have seen in a previous video that I attempted to make some drums using the new Meld synthesizer in Live 12. And I suggested in that video that I would do a follow-up video where I will try and do some bass and maybe uh, an entire song using only Meld and not really any effects. Well, we'll see. So I this is the set that I had in the last video, but I've made a few changes. I trashed Raw um, because uh, I want to save that for later. And I wasn't really happy on a second listen. I kind of thought this, the drums were a bit guff. Um, and also I wanted to explore these new um, like resonator filters. So I've made this like gong. Very discreet little gong sound, which uh, took me a little while to get to. So this is the Fold FM engine. Um, it took me a little while to sort of really understand the LFO. I was kind of expecting the LFOs to behave like the more traditional LFOs, and that is indeed what LFO2 is. LFO2 is pretty much like yeah, what I'm a little bit more familiar with, whereas some of these other things I was a little bit like, what do all these mean? This isn't what I want. I just want a sample and hold LFO on some parameters, which I've mapped here. And I got there in the end. So now when you... And it also sounds a little bit like the Ableton metronome by mistake. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so that is just um, buzzing away. I made the kick a little bit better, more consistent. Made the snare a bit better. I left the hats alone. So this is kind of... Oh, that gong is quite a bit much. Let's turn it down a bit down here. And what's nice as well, is I think, is that the filters are polyphonic. I was... Ex experimenting with the poly and the mono and um yeah when the lfo uh triggers the filter it does it on each new voice i think which is always good in a synthesizer so i'm gonna try and do some bass now so let's just pull this down a little bit in the mix close this down let's pull meld in and uh, see what we can do with some bass. So one of my patrons um, on my Patreon page, have you have you been on that? You really should join it. It's 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 just brilliant. All the cool kids are there now. Um, one of them asked me in our group chat that we've got if I can use some of the new generator tools to make something that actually sounds good. <laughs> and I went, um, I'll try. Uh, I haven't really explored them yet. I'm still a bit of a noob, Ableton 12 noob. So, but let's try it anyway. So um, I'm going to make a new clip here and I'm going to set the length of the clip to eight bars and I'm going to set the, uh, the grid to one bar. I'm going to turn on the, whatever the, you call this thing, the global scale, although that's not what it's called, whatever the scale, and um, scale the clip. And then I'm going to go to, where is it? Seed, yes. So uh, I'm going to start with like a very basic, like bass line <laughs> that's kind of one note per bar over eight bars. And then I'm going to try and transform it into something that's a little bit more funky. Maybe it might come out like an acid bass line or something. So let's start by saying I want to seed some notes between uh, C1 and C2 maybe. Let's try D2. Okay, so it's already done that. So we've got some nice juicy notes in the key or the mode of C Dorian over eight bars. Let's have a listen. And indeed. Oh, I turned the volume down, didn't I? Dummy. Right, let's mute the drums for a second. All right, so we've got a... So the key is C. There's a few too many C's in here. I wonder if I just trigger this again. All right. So, all right, that's a good start. I might just move that one there and move that one there and maybe move this one here. Okay, that'll do. Let's go to meld. In fact, we can have it on the same page. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Right. as a sort of not really a sub bass but just a low what i call bowed basses although they're not bowed but you know ones that just kind of go you know just 
sit behind. And then normally what, what I might do is I might put like another bass on top, which is more kind of like a funky thing that's got more notes in and is more kind of percussive, but is in that range, in that register. So let's see if we can do something with this. Um, can we ping out the... I wonder if you can have... Oh, that's good, isn't it? You can have that there and that there and that there. So many windows now. Um, it's exciting. So let's maybe see if I can just sort of add the... See what this is all about. Let's maybe do like an eighth note wander LFO on the macro, the shape. So where would that be? Here. Set this to 50 and this to 50. And I think that's going to do 50% either side of that. Oh no, it's only doing 50% beneath it. Uh, okay, this might be a good time to sort of address how these LFOs kind of work in terms of their actual range so this here is a kind of a visual cue for what the lfo is doing to this control and indeed up here as well so it's only going beneath which i think is rather weird because i dialed in a positive amount let's do a negative amount now it's going the other direction is that really for real mm, ableton is that for real, that doesn't make sense to me. I would think that if I dialed 50 here, I would be going 50% of this side if this is a unipolar LFO. But instead, it's going in the negative ranges. Maybe you meant to do that. I'm not going to argue with you. Just seems a little strange to me. Unless it's because I've got this LFO2 effects on. Let's turn those off. No, still going in the negative range there, even though I've dialed in positive could it be to do with something down here? Anyway, I'm not going to grumble about that anymore. Okay, that's kind of nice. Let's do the same thing here. Um, let's use LFO2 for the second macro. So I'll put the... I'll just put this to like a... Um, just a sign, I guess. 1 over 4. Let's have retrigger on. Ah, see, now that one is going. Ah, you know what? I can see something here. So there's a line down the middle. And in fact, that is beneath the line. Okay, now it's above the line. Okay, it's suddenly starting to make sense. So wouldn't that need to be offset slightly? Let's just go to like a basic. Uh, whoops, I just clicked a thing. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, all right. I take back what I said. I just didn't understand <laughs> this at all. <laughs> Which I've learnt my lesson there and you should too. Understand how things work before you start going. Because that's how you all talk. That's not how you all talk. I'm projecting. It's very unhealthy. I should really stop. Um, let's turn this down. Okay, now it's that. Now it's going in the positive direction because the retrigger is on and the phase starts here and goes up. Right, got it now. Sorry, everyone. So there's a phase adjustment. All right. This is interesting. This is like a square wave that you can kind of set the range of. Pulsate. What's this? Oh, it's interesting. Oh, these are very, very exciting. Gosh, they're a bit. I'm not. I don't know what they do though. That's nice. All right, I'll just stick with the wander. So maybe the morph is actually kind of increasing the range. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, let's dial this LFO2 down a bit. Actually, I'm going to turn retrigger off for both of these. Okay, let's go back to our envelopes. A little bit more. Let's go down an octave on this. There we go. Set it to mono.
All right, that's interesting. There's a drive here as well, uh, which I didn't notice the first time I was looking. Mixer drive. Let's see what that's like. All right, that's kind of cool. Sort of a gnarly, subby bass type thing. All right, now I'm going to take a copy. Well, I'm not going to take a copy. I'm going to load another meld and I'm going to copy that clip over, make it the same color, I think, as that. Right, and so that should all be, um, gosh. Okay, that should all be the same notes, I think. Okay, so now I'm going to see if I can get like a sort of 303 type sound. Turn that off. Let's open the matrix thing and route the modulation, uh, which is here to the filter frequency. Okay. Bit of, it's not quite a 303, but it's your filter sweep envelope thing. Right. So let's have a look at what we can do to transform um, these notes into something a little bit more interesting. So we've planted our seed of notes. Let's go to, um, not there, let's go to arpeggiate. And let's just say random. Whoa. Okay, that's a little bit too far. So it's done it to the scale. Let's pull the degrees down a little bit to like two. How many steps is it done? All right. Okay, now that we've done that, let's go to this this span thing I quite like to apply sort of random legato. Which is gonna work very nice for a 303 sound or an acid sound or whatever. So I'm gonna first I'm gonna set this to mono. And then I'm going to turn on um, portamento. Let's say the set the portamento to like a hundred millisecond. Brilliant. <laughs> it's just acid. Acid in seconds in live twelve. Well, I mean, not quite, but you know, the the feel is there. The sound, perhaps, not quite, but you know, that sort of bubbly, squirly, swirly, squelchy, squint, squint, squinty, squashy. Okay, so melt doesn't have the velocity to time on the envelopes like a lot of the other instruments do, which is my favorite thing, but I'm not going to complain. Instead, what I will just do is root um, the velocity to the decay of this mod um, modulation filter because I'm going to apply a random velocity to all of these notes just by simply, I think, let's hide the chance lane just by simply doing that. Okay, now they've all got random velocities. Whoops, and then I'm going to go back to meld and I'm going to say, apply the velocity to this decay here. And we can simply do that by pulling it right down and dialing it up here. going to root LFO2 to this second macro here, which is here. So when, even though that these names change on the matrix here, they just appear as macro one and macro two. So let's do what we did a minute ago, set this to 50 and then assign it to LFO2 at, fi yeah, at 50. Sometimes when I hit, when I hit enter, it moves me down or maybe that's my mouse. Anyway, all right, let's go to LFO2 and set this to random, turn the retrigger on and just set the rate down really low and then we should get. Ah. <laughs> it's like it's singing to me, man. It's like the synth is singing. It's going. <laughs> okay. 
All right, let's hear it with everything else. Sounds a bit analog, doesn't it? This is what people are going to say in the comments. Oh, it sounds like analog. I've got to stop talking like that when I talk about other people. It's it's just not it's not going to help. It does sound well analog, though, doesn't it? My gongs. My gongs have gone a bit quiet. I might put my gongs back up a bit in volume, but maybe I need to. The volume, the volume defaults to minus three, which is pretty nice. Okay, I think that bass there is a little loud. Let's come down. Sounds all right. If you like this sort of stuff, <laughs> which I do. Bubbly electro acid shit. Okay, so let's maybe just do something interesting. Um, let's pull those faders down. And then I'm just going to take a copy of that. I'll give that name here. I'll just call it Acid. Uh, I'm going to take a copy of that, go in here, and then just go to the chance thing and give some of them, um, just randomize the chance. Yeah. So you have to select this then, I think. Randomize by 25%. Oh, it kind of does it there as well. I said this is all new. I haven't worked this all out yet, but... We're learning together. Let's... Yeah. That's fun. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could do that and you could do that in the old live, but I just never really thought about doing that before. Ouch. Okay. Maybe I should actually... No, they won't clash. I was thinking about them. They might get muddy in the bass, but um, I don't want to use any effects, at least not yet. Um, this is... I think this is sounding fine to me for now. I think that might be a good place to stop. It's got a vibe. It's got a vibe, and then I'm thinking about what I might like to add next. So, yeah, in the next video, I think I'll maybe try and add some pads using meld and then maybe I can come up with some um, ideas using the, what is it, the stacks thing? Where's that? Stacks, which does chords and stuff like that, I think. So, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. I think that'll do. So there was a couple of bass lines I did using meld and some of these new generative and transformative tools. I'm going to go and put this on my Patreon now that you say so you can download this and turn it into whatever you want or just throw it in the bin. I don't know. Or tell people that you made it. <laughs> I, don't, I can't see that being of any use to anyone. <laughs> All right. So see you in the next video. Only Mel's in Live 12. Thanks. Bye.